April 8th, this Factory 5 Live. Right off the bat, I have some bad news. If you didn't see it posted earlier, I'm going to tell you right now, our special VIP guest, which I have been looking forward to tremendously, we've made a big deal about, had a family emergency, he's going to reschedule. So we have our special guest coming out on, Dave, what was it, the day after my birthday, May 6th. So four weeks from today, we'll have our special guest. Now I'm joined by Henry Renard. Henry is uh, known him for 25 years. I said 15 and he says 25. Um, U.S. Air Force, Lieutenant Colonel, major player in the Factory 5 business. He's, he's known everybody in the industry. He's built 40 cars? 42. 42 cars. He bought his original kit from my brother and I back in the old building, and he still had, did business with us, which is remarkable. Um, so since we don't have our special guest, I figured, hey, I had a Lotus here. I got Henry here. Let's have some fun with some cars here. So Dave, come on over here. We're going to talk about these two cars, um, Just but, but before I go too far, so remember, four weeks from today, we're going to do the same thing. Our special guest will be here. This person who's coming defines Factory 5 and defines adversity and courage. And I'm dying to spread. I haven't, I haven't broken the secret yet, so I'm going to keep a secret till uh, a month from today. Um, Henry's here. Uh, Henry knows everything about Factory 5, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But what we want to do is, since I had this Lotus here, give you a close-up look at the Lotus Elise, which a lot of people compare to the Factory 5 818. I mean, Henry, you've driven the car, right? Yes. You've driven an 818? Yes. Um, I've been on track on the 818. I just drove this car today. It's the first time I drove a Lotus. And, um, and for you guys that don't know the history of Lotus, you know, this was one of the first kit cars. The Lotus Super 7 was you know, a car in a box, kind of what we're doing today. And Henry, let's hear um, kind of your opinion of the car. I'll start out with the first thing I noticed when I drove it. It drives like it drives like an 818. It drives like a like a custom built car. Very lightweight, very good handling, but it has a raw edge to it. it. Doesn't have a fit and finish that I was expecting. You know, of like a Lotus Evora or an Esprit Turbo. You know that car. But what what are your takes on the car? Your butt's about six inches off the ground. Your butt's. <laughs> it drives like a roller skate, but so does the 818. Uh, nice car, nice looking car. Kind of uh, to, to quote a friend of ours, kind of looks like bones. So. Uh, it has some different lines. Definitely different. Lines. And you know, it doesn't show in photos. A lot of the Factory 5 cars, people always say, God, in person, they look so much better. I think the car looks better in person. Yeah. I don't know, Dave, about, about how it comes off in video, and I know these cars have been on track all the time, but so looks-wise, if you compare it to the 818, I mean, they have a very similar um, dimension. The body of the 818 looks a little bit larger, Dave. I think the proportions are just a little bit bigger, but on weight, um, 2010 to 2060 pounds, on that. We're at 1,800 pounds as a roadster with a hard top and some of the accoutrements. We modified the turbo. I think we're right about 2,050 pounds. So head to head, mono to mono, same weight. So Henry, what do you think about um, performance? I mean, these guys are building these sports cars for performance. What do you think? Not a lot of horsepower with this car. Not you a got lot a 190 of horse, four cylinder Toyota Celica S motor, right? Not a lot of torque either. But uh, momentum car is what I used to call it when we raced momentum cars. Sticks like glue to the track. That car has a lot more horsepower, a lot more get up and go, and also sticks like glue. Yeah, you know, we get spoiled with V8s, right? You get an Effect 5 Cobra and you just jump on the gas. You got torque, you got horsepower, you got everything. Nice. This car, you got to spool it up. Yes. And, and the turbo in the, in the SUV comes in sooner than you think. Yes. And when it comes on, you know, I think I got to give the edge of performance for sure on the track to the 818. Um, and from a horsepower standpoint, that little super motor, you're like 190 horse, and I know the Elise, um, uh, I think it has, I think it's 190 horse, right? Yes. Um, the Exige. The Exige is the turbocharged one. Um, the Subi motor, it's running a stock 225 horse with modest improvements. You know, a little bit bigger turbo, injectors, a few other things. We're looking at, yeah, close to 300 horsepower. So, um, and, and they do sound different. Car. Yeah. 2,000 pounds. Yeah. So, Factory 5 cars, Henry, um, we got performance. I think this has the nod. One of the things that have been, and, and it's up to the builder at home, how hard do you build that interior? How, how, how well do you execute it? I think the Lotus has got a nice little interior. It's very race-esque, but it's also clean. It's well-pointed. I think it's a little, a little better than the 818. I agree. I agree. Production car, non-production car. This, this is built by the builder. They do the interior however they want to do it. This one has the leather dash, so it's got, it's got some upgrades in it. It's got the new shifter. So it's, it's a nice interior, but that's a production car. Hard to beat a production car. 
It really is. And we're running the sous vide gauge pod, which which kind of it is it is what it is. You know, it's it's not. I think the Lotus has a kind of a cool gauge pod in it. Um, horsepower to weight. I think we got the advantage. Torsion rigidity. Cars feel the same driving though. I mean, they really do. Dave, why don't you take a slow walk around the cars, and we can answer any questions. I'll go grab my phone. Um, Henry's an expert on building these cars as well. So not only has he had a hand in 818s, but he's had a hand in, in the Fact 5 Roadsters, the Coupes. I mean, you built a, a show-winning GTM that was on the cover of a magazine. 33? Your 33 Hot Rod was one of the best. That was the flathead Hot Rod. Oh, uh, we got to hear about that car. Fourth place at SEMA. You know what? That was um, NASCAR driver picked that car. That was one of the top 10 cars at SEMA. Uh, let me just see here. Go ahead and do a walk around, Dave. By the way, um, Jeff Kleiner says hello. Um, you can keep looking at the cars, Dave. I'll just keep reading out. Um, Tech Autos out in Great Britain are watching. There's huge fans on the 818 in Britain. You've got a great source pool for um, Subies. Uh, tell us all you can't keep your secret anymore. I'm dying to tell you who's coming in a month. It's supposed to be today. Um, the machinery in the back, Paul asks about. Uh, that's a tube steel bending machine, and then we got a laser cutter in the back. Um, Trevis says hello, Eric Trevis. Now Eric was invited here, um, great guy, and Eric's a Black Hawk helicopter pilot. I think he was talking about doing flips in them and stuff. So you got some crazy guys in the Factor 5 community, really talented people. Um, Henry, tell me about your 33 Hot Rod. Uh, we'll get back to these cars in a second, but Henry built, um, I think it was picked by, um, it wasn't MSN, who was the, the news organization? Because it was a, a group of NASCAR drivers picked top 10 at SEMA, your Hot Rod. 33 flat black uh, top 10 I think it was it was a flathead supercharged flathead had 15 inch with baby moons uh, tell us about that car that was a great hot rod of all the cars I built I built 42 different factory fives that's the one I missed the most uh, I did some custom interior I had aircraft seats on it aircraft gauges in it uh, one best in show every show it was ever at the blower with the blower and the flathead downhill with the tailwind 275 horsepower I had 10 grand into that motor so the most money I had in the motor with the least amount of horsepower <laughs> But it was You're a blast. Generous with the horsepower. Yes. <laughs> was, I, well, I had it tuned. I had it tuned. Uh, I had twin carbs on it for a little while. I had triple Strombergs on it. I just tried all these different things until I put the blower on. The blower is what I, what I liked the best. And I sold it to a guy, a collector in Georgia, and who called me up a month later and asked me to change the motor out and put a Coyote in it. I said, absolutely. So what would you charge? I said, nothing. What do you mean? Can I keep the flathead? I haven't heard from him. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting rare. It's nice to see them. And it really did kind of make that car vintage. Uh, Mark Doherty says hi. Hey, Mark. Uh, let's see, uh, Lotus Lease. Hmm, turbo motor to normally aspirated motor is stupid. You should have used an Exige 260. Well, I didn't have an Exige 260. If you have one, you can send it to me, but I don't know about being stupid, but tough crowd here. Uh, good afternoon, Al Adkins, uh, Mr. Big Block 427. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, guys, we're having fun, the David Henry show. I don't know about that, Sten. Um, so far, SEMA's on. Um, you know, in a month, we have our special guest. We've got uh, an SRA in the summertime. Uh, EAA is a go. Um, it looks like the country's kind of starting to open up a bit. Things are getting a little bit better. So hopefully we can do have some more fun this year. I'm kind of heartbroken that we're not doing our, our special guest here. It's just kind of delayed gratification though. So he'll be here on May 6th. Um, really, oh, HB, yeah, thank you. Right after SEMA is HB. And a lot of guys have kind of complained about the weather. But if you look at the weather in Huntington Beach, I used to live there on November 6th. It's really very similar to the end of April. Um, I, I know the guys from NorCal are going to have a hard time coming down. You can get rain at that time of the year. It's still a bit early for rain, but hopefully we'll have a great time at Huntington Beach. That'll be the day after SEMA. So I'm going to be bloodshot eyes walking like a, an old drunk. And uh, But yeah, after SEMA, you don't have a lot of gas in the tank. So maybe. Yeah, you've been, <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Um, anyway, uh, and I should, I'm, I'm remiss to mention that uh, uh, not only is Henry an uh, Air Force veteran, um, six tours of combat. He has helped everybody in the Factor 5 community. And it's one of the things that's been, I don't know, I think one of the things I'm most proud of is the community. The company's great. We built great cars and everything. But you got people like Henry, Eric Trevis, Mark Doherty, Sten Johnson, people of Jeff Kleiner, people have texted and, and mentioned on here. 
and a lot more um, that have spent their life building cars and helping others build cars. And it really is a unique calling and it's a special community. So super honored to have Henry here. Unfortunately, we're going to have to fly him back a month later uh, for, for our special guest. But guys, if you have any questions, Lotus uh, Elise and the Factory 5. But you know what? Let me say something else about the Factory 5. We have built a normally aspirated. We built, um, I think it was a, a donor Impreza non-turbo. 165 horse. And I'll tell you, that car went to Australia. It was right-hand drive. Um, what a fun car to drive. That would have been a better head-to-head, -head, but we're really not driving the cars today. I suppose we could, you know, listen to the exhaust notes. You want to, you want to try that? You want to hear that? Well, Henry, do you know how to start that thing? It's got that little button on the on the key switch. Yep. It's like a little key fob button, and then you can hit the start button. Yeah, that's all right. You just want to see me get in this. I do. I couldn't get in the damn thing. All right. Yeah, it's like uh, it's, it's that big fat key fob. Put the key in, and then and then after you turn the ignition on, you turn the button, you push the large, yeah, turn the ignition on, and then turn the button on the push the button on the on the key fob. This guy. It's a different sound, isn't it? So that normally aspirated engine is a little smoother. The boxer motors kind of sounds lumpier, a little throatier. Um, two and a half liters, what's that? That's a 1.8 liter. Yeah, so a little bit more displacement in the Subi. Um, two fun cars. I mean, honestly, if you bought either one of them, I don't think you'd hate your life, you know? It'd be a lot of fun. Um, answer some questions online. Guys, in a month, we'll have our special guest. We had our microphones here, and Mad Dog was just happy because he didn't have to film because we had a film crew coming in to do it. So. Guys, sorry about today. Uh, a lot of fun having Henry here. Ron's picking up a kit. Um, it's been a good spring so far. Looking forward to seeing you. We'll do Facebook Live uh, sooner than next month, but a month from now, May 6th, 2 p.m., special guest. Dave, Factor 5 out. Thanks, Henry. Out.